I've never been good at finding reasons to live. So when I feel down or hopeless, I like to go out and distract myself until I realize that it's actually pretty easy to enjoy life if you move fast and ignore what you look like. And that's why I love the 1975. Their music largely revolves around a kind of existential anxiety that's familiar to most of us. You see, we suffer from an overload of information and a lack of knowledge. We know that our environment is not doing well. We know that the economy is stacked against us. We know that technology and social media are bad for us, but all the while they've become a ubiquitous channel of communication for humanity. But what are we supposed to do about any of it? How can one person fight against problems of a global nature? Things feel pretty gloomy right now, and the future doesn't exactly look much better. The 1975 are a chaotic band for chaotic times. The very foundation of their songwriting and aesthetic is built on the idea that the world has stopped making sense. But the 1975 refuse to stand in the corner at the party and wonder what they could have done differently. They create with the idea that the only way to thrive in a broken world is to live. Their music is beautiful yet bittersweet. It's the perfect soundtrack for a generation that's lost in the dark. This video is brought to you by Skillshare. Sign up at the link in the description and get two months of incredible tutorials on almost any musical, artistic, or business subject you can think of. It's the perfect way to start 2020 with a bang. The 1975's DNA is pretty diverse. Specifically, I want to talk about one of their biggest hits, a song that I think displays a lot of what makes them special, Love It If We Made It. The song meditates on a long list of volatile aspects of modern society, from racial issues to dead rappers to the widespread decline of religion. The song's centerpiece, modernity has failed us, and I'd love it if we made it. It's a concept that the 1975 got all the way from mid-20th century existentialism, an intellectual movement that sought to free us from the fear that life doesn't make sense. Existentialism acknowledges that the universe will one day fold in on itself and invalidate all human progress. It teaches us that even though life is cold, dark, and turbulent, we alone can decide our fates and assign meaning to the world around us. In short, personal freedom is the only answer to the infinite storm of space and time. The 1975 have long seen human connection as a solution, too. Their early music focused on slick love songs, but it didn't take long for the call of the void to set in. Rarely do they set their sights directly on commentary, but rather, Matty Healy's songwriting reflects his own state of mind. He's a romantic plagued by possible futures and faraway injustice. But he continues on in his quest to forge true human connection, because he knows that something is better than nothing. I don't think that my interpretation is the most necessary, though. Sure, if you read deeply into it, that's what you get from their music. It does have existential overtones. But the 1975 don't set out to make music with those existential overtones. They make music about things they care about. And it's pretty damn popular, too. It's not that their music is designed to have existentialist overtones. It's that we live in a society of existentialists. We make jokes about terrorism and death while trying to save the environment with recycling and anti-consumerism. The 1975 take life seriously, but they also kiss male fans in a country where homosexuality is illegal. We're all here at a music festival in Alabama. Would you look at that? So by default, by proxy, we are all in favor of freedom of expression. Give up for freedom of expression. You know what's also important? Freedom for women to do with their reproductive systems what they want. Yeah, 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 okay, okay, okay. Yeah, it's easy, I get it. We're all on the left-hand side of things because we're at a music festival. I'm not preaching. That's why the 1975 is so popular. 
It's why their music is sold at Urban Outfitters and played in Chipotle. Not because they are philosophers, but because philosophy runs in the veins of our generation. We live in a time where radical individualism is a both dangerous and powerful tool for positive change. We choose what to believe in and what to reject according to our own self-constructed morality, and we follow our consciences with determination. In the words of the existentialist Albert Camus, Believe me, there is no such thing as great suffering, great regret, and great memory. Everything is forgotten, even a great love. That's what's sad about life, and also what's wonderful about it. There is only a way of looking at things, a way that comes to you every once in a while. That's why it's good to have had love in your life after all, to have had an unhappy passion. It gives you an alibi for the vague despairs we all suffer from. All of that is to say, the 1975 are the musical equivalent of joking that you want to die while you sit in the library at the university you worked so hard to get into, studying for the degree you want so very badly. You're stressed and you're tired, but life is worth fighting for, even if you don't understand why just yet. And if that's not the most 2010s attitude you can think of, I don't know what is. The 1975 have been with me in my own life for years now, and I'm deeply grateful for the perspectives I've seen through their eyes. I can't wait to hear what they make next. And if you want to work on your own art and skills while we anticipate their next record, Notes on a Conditional Form, I recommend picking up a few new skills on Skillshare, this video's sponsor. Skillshare is an online learning community with thousands of classes in design, music, business, and more. Their annual premium membership is super affordable. It gives you unlimited access to high quality classes on useful topics for less than $10 a month. You can use Skillshare to improve your skills, unlock new opportunities, and do more of the work you love. I personally want to recommend Abby Lawson's Creating Layered GIFs for Photoshop and After Effects class. But they have a number of different classes available whether you're interested in hip hop production, motion graphics, or any other creative discipline under the sun. I personally use Skillshare nearly every day to help learn more about my own job of making videos. And that's why you should join the millions of students already learning on Skillshare today with a special offer that's just for my viewers. Start 2020 with a bang and get two months of unlimited access for free. That's skl.sh slash volksgeist17. skl.sh slash volksgeist17. Two months for free.